So yeah, let me take you on my personal taste journey through these two cocktails. So the first cocktail we're gonna make is wonderfully called the Clitorini, otherwise known as a dry martini with a twist. And I love this cocktail because it's simple, it's clean, it's smooth, it makes me feel sexy. So I'll order this on a date night or maybe if I'm going dancing with some friends. I want something that's gonna cleanse the palate, bring a zing to my step, um, but not overcomplicate things with fizzy mixers or edible garnishes. Um, so on the spectrum between bitter and sweet, I wanna move more towards the bitter end, but we're gonna work with ice in this to create a wonderful smoothness to this cocktail. Um, so yeah, so that physical process is, is working with ice for this cocktail. Um, and it's, it's quite spectacular because it's turning something which should be quite nasty, drinking neat gin at room temperature into something that's gonna taste quite sensational. So if we link it back to our intimate experiences, um, this might be quite closely linked to something that in normal times might be you know, a bit mundane or maybe a bit weird, turned into something sensational if you learn about what your partner likes or using a bit of technique. Um, so yeah, so I talk about technique here, which is really important. And the importance here is introducing energy into preparing this cocktail. So you might've heard in that quote in James Bond, shaken, not stirred. So with our martini, I'd advise you not to go near the shaken because if you're shaking a martini with gin, um, that physical high energy process will actually break up the botanicals in the gin, those rich botanical oils and leave you with that harsh flavor and an overly diluted martini. So I'm gonna show you, instead of a shaken, I'm gonna show you a stirred, which means that the rich botanical oils in that gin will layer across the water molecules, bringing some of that water with it, but not too much, but giving you that beautiful smoothness in a martini. So that's gonna be the really important process with this cocktail. Um, so I said I'm using gin, um, but of course you can use vodka if you prefer, or a non-alcoholic alternative. Some supermarkets actually are now selling non-alcoholic gins and vodkas, um, some which are really nice. Um, I also recommend you using a rosemary syrup if you can make one. If you've got any rosemary in your back garden, a bit of sugar, a bit of water, you can make a beautiful kind of savory botanical syrup that can mimic gin. Um, if anyone has gone and done that, if they could let us know in chat and, and let us know how it tastes, that'd be really great as well. Um, now, wet or dry. So you'll be forgiven for thinking that the more vermouth you add, the drier your cocktail. Actually, it's the opposite. The less vermouth in your martini, the drier it is. So I quite like a dry martini, but I'm gonna go with a five to one ratio of gin to vermouth. And, but of course you can add more if you prefer. And then finally, I wanna give my tongue a tickle with a bit of lemon zest. Um, and this citrus also brings out the rich botanicals in the gin, giving it a bit of an extra lift. Um, and that gives me a bit of an extra lift as well. That's why I love it. Okay, so without further ado, we're gonna go and make our cocktail. Um, so, this is the glass I'm going to use, which is your classic martini glass. Now, of course, you can use any glass you want. Um, but I love this one because the less corners in the glass mean there's less um, trapping of water, which means less dilution of the martini. So that's why I like it so much. Um, so we're going to start with touch. And this is by preparing our glass. Um, and as I go, I'll pause in between each stage. So if you want to watch first and then do it, that's absolutely fine. But you can also do it at the same time as me if you wish. So I've got my ice in front of me. I'm gonna stick two ice cubes into my martini glass. And I'm gonna just hold the base of the glass kind of in between my two fingers, firmly on the table. And I'm gonna swirl in a clockwise motion, which means that the ice will swirl around the glass. And you could do this with any glass. Um, and what we wanna do is bring down the temperature in the glass. So I'm gonna do that right now while you guys get started. I've just lost one of my ice cubes. Just add another one. <laughs> okay, you should hear a nice swirling motion of my ice right now. Okay, so how do we know when we're done? We know when we're done when we've got a beautiful fog forming on your glass. That's when we know that our glass is at a really good temperature. So I'm just gonna give it a little bit of an extra swirl. Okay, maybe more gentle swirling, so otherwise you lose your eyes. And now my glass. 
it's got beautiful fog and it's ready to go. Okay, now to make our cocktail. So I'm gonna just use my shaker to prepare my cocktail, but if you have a normal glass or a pint glass, that's absolutely fine as well. Don't add any ice to this yet. We're going straight for the liquor first. So first it's my gin or whatever alternative you're using. And it's 75 mils. So I'm currently using a measure. So it's about 25 mils on the big end and 15 mils on the other. An egg cup is fine. So if you want to use an egg cup as a 25 mil and half an egg cup measure as 15 mils, that's fine as well. It doesn't have to be exact. So I need three 25 mils of my gin, which gives you 75. Good luck. And then 15 mils of my dry. So I'm using a dry vermouth instead of a sweet vermouth, just because I like the taste. Completely up to you what you want to use. Ready? Now, this is where technique comes in. So I've got my liquor in my shaker. And now I'm going to add my ice. Of course, I'm not going to shake. And I'm going to stir. And I'm going to stir for about 20 seconds. And how much ice? I probably fill halfway up to the um, shaker or to the glass for ice. I just want to avoid over dilution here. Okay, I'm happy with that. I've got my stir and I'm going to swirl for about 20 seconds. Now you can start listening to what you hear when you're swirling. You don't want to hear any kind of cracking noises of the ice because that means there's too much dilution. If you hear that, start again. And also you're gonna smell the botanicals being released from the gin at this moment as well, which makes me really excited about this cocktail. Okay, that's enough. So I've got um, a strainer here, but a kitchen sieve would, would do the same job. All you wanna do is avoid the ice going into your martini glass. Okay, so I've got my nice fogged up martini glass and I'm gonna strain my martini into the glass. Beautiful, it smells amazing. Okay, and I'm leaving about a centimeter from the edge here, mostly because it's not very delicate. If you fill it right at the top and try and drink it, it's gonna end up all down the front. You don't wanna do that on date night, do you? Absolutely not. Okay, so the final bit here, um, and I'll go slowly on this because I know some of you will be mixing your drinks right now. Hold on, let me just stick on gallery view and I see how you guys are doing. I mostly see people just looking. <laughs> I hope some of you are making cocktails. <laughs> if not, that's fine. I'll just make cocktails. Um, okay, so this last bit, um, as well as the physical process of bringing down the temperature of the drink, this bit really excites me as well. And this is the lemon twist. So what I want to do is get, grab my lemon. Um, and to make a twist, I want to cut off a wedge that's quite thick and quite uh, wide and the reason for this is that I'm going to actually light the citrus oils in the zest of my lemon so I want to be able to make it wide enough so I can squeeze it into a flame and I'll get sparks over my martini and it looks really cool. It's a really good party trick for Christmas as well if you guys want to learn how to do this. Okay so when I cut my lemon I'm going to actually cut down into the flesh quite a thick wide piece of peel. Smells amazing once you cut into it. So there we go. There's my peel and you'll see I've really gone deep into the lemon on that one. Now what I want to do is make sure that my lighter is working. Give it a good shake, give it a good test. That's good. Always good when you add fire to a cocktail making process. Now I've got the lemon peel in between my fingers. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start the flame and then I'm going to squeeze the peel so outside flesh towards the flame and I sh you should see sparks. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Whoa, let's try that one again. Takes a couple of tries. Clean your lighter because it's going to have lemon zest on it once you try it. There you go. Woo, ready to go. So, cheers. Your Clitorini is ready to taste. Excellent, it's my favorite. So over to you, I have told you about how the clitorini makes me feel. I'm definitely feeling sexy right now. How does it make you feel? So it'd be great if you shared in the chat once your cocktail is ready, how this cocktail is making you feel. Sorry, badge tail, I need to remember that word. Um, and 
yeah, please raise your hand because we'd love if you were able to speak to us about how this cocktail is making you feel. So if you raise your hand using hopefully the, the hand button, you've got access to it, um, Charlie can unmute you and you can speak. Or you can also uh, raise your hand just like this if you don't know where the hand button is. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Jared. Let us know how you feel. How I feel? Yeah, I'm feeling good. <laughs> He's feeling sexy. <laughs> yeah. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> how are we doing on time? Do we have time for? Anyone else let us know? Oh, actually, no, we don't actually have time. But yeah, keep keep posting in the chat how this cocktail makes you feel or any reflections, even any adjustments you think you might make as well. So you might prefer to have a dirty clitorini and you can do that by um, adding some olive brine and an olive garnish. It gives a lovely savory flavor to that drink as well. And um, so without further ado, I think we'll uh, carry on to the second cocktail. Excellent, Ellen and Jonathan perks is up, love it. Um, and the second badge tail is uh, a non-alcoholic version. Um, and this one is called the Volvalicious, delicious Volvalicious. Um, and for this cocktail, I'm really excited to show you the glass that I want to use for it. Um, and hopefully some of you might have this glass as well. It's called a coupe glass. Mm -hmm. And obviously again, um, you can use whatever glass you want for this cocktail. I find the coupe glass quite interesting because there's a story that uh, this glass is modeled on Marie Antoinette's left breast. Um, and Marie Antoinette was the last queen of France before the French Revolution. Um, and the story is that uh, during her reign, uh, she wanted her court to toast for her, her health through the coupe glass um, and through imagining drinking um, from her breast. Um, so unfortunately, it's a legend because there is evidence that shows that the coupe glass actually exist, existed before Marie Antoinette was, was reigning. So, but. I love the, the connection here and, and the narrow boundary between our sexual desires and how we find pleasure in, in what we drink. Um, so I'll, I'll keep the rumor going that Marie Antoinette um, designed the coupe glass um, and you can too. Um, next, I wanna talk about flavor. Um, so I wanna make a non-alcoholic drink that's balanced because too often, and I, I found this when I was pregnant, non-alcoholic drinks are far too sweet um, and there's no subtle flavors in there. And so while my friends are loving their clitorinis, I'm having a really dull apple tizer. Um, I want something that's a vulvalicious, that's gonna make me happy and have just as much a good time as my friends. Um, so I'm gonna introduce some neutrality into my drink. So again, if we talk about that bitter and sweet spectrum, um, I'm gonna introduce neutrality here by, by combining sour lime with the sweetness of elderflower and apple. And I also wanna bring in that smoothness again, like I love from the clitorini um, through introducing the cool cucumber as well. Um, so I want something that's fresh and that's clean. Um, and also it's nearly Christmas, so I want something that's spicy as well, that gives some extra warmth. And we're gonna do that by uh, creating a cinnamon ring to our coupe glass. So just like in our previous cocktail, we're gonna start by preparing our glass. Um, so I have with me a small plate, some cinnamon. And what I'm gonna do is just pour my cinnamon onto my side plate. Then I'm going to cut up my lime just into quarters. I've got four wedges. Quite hard lime to cut. Cocktail making, try your best to find as fresh fruit as you can, because um, that means then you can do the cool party trick with your lemon zest. It also means that you're not trying to cut into a really hard line like I'm doing right now. <laughs> okay, so to prepare my glass, I've got one of my lime wedges. Um, and basically what I wanna do is, I just wanna wet the rim of my cocktail glass. So I'm gonna hold the lime over the rim of my glass. And I'm just gonna spin the glass along my lime 
to make it nice and wet. Um, and people who are into arts and crafts will know that less is more. So be very gentle. Don't push too hard on the lime because anywhere the lime is, the cinnamon will go and it could look really messy. So nice and gently around the rim. Okay, I'm happy with that. Then I'm gonna dip my limed rim into the cinnamon. all the way around. Yeah, I've got a beautiful golden rim on my coupe glass. Hopefully you can see that okay in the dark. Okay, my glass is ready. Um, now next I'm going to introduce you to a muddling process, uh, which is really fun. Um, and we do that by grabbing our shaker. So I'm just gonna ditch my eyes from the last ring. Don't need it anymore. Nice, clean, empty shaker. Again, if you don't have a shaker, it doesn't matter. Um, you don't have to shake this drink. You can just stir it really vigorously if you want to. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm using my shaker to muddle my cucumber in there. And what do I mean by muddling? So I'm gonna grab my two inches of cucumber and I'm gonna dice it into nice little cubes any way you want to. So cube probably around this size. I'll pop it into my shaker. Now, whoever's following along, just feel free to get started on this because what we're going to do next is spend about a minute bashing it. Um, and some of you might have a, a model that you can get as part of a cocktail set. I lost mine, so I'm now using a rolling pin which is just as good a job. So I'm going to really get some elbow grease in there and start bashing my cucumber. Um, if you don't have a shaker, you might not want to use a glass for this, like a pot or something that's quite durable would be fine. So get going. I'm going to do some good. Get that stress out. Really annoyed you today. Again, think about your five senses. What are you smelling right now? I'm smelling some really beautiful fresh cucumber. Really nice. Okay, so that's the muddling process done. Next is just adding the rest of your ingredients. So you've got your four lime wedges. Squeeze that in. One, two, three, Hopefully some of you brought a towel with you because I'm making a mess right now. There we go. Um, next, I'm going to put in 15 mils of my elderflower cordial. Beautiful and sweet. And then I'm going to put in 100 mils of my favourite apple juice. So you want a nice high quality apple juice for this. 100 mils means four for my measures or four egg cups if you're using. Now that's all my ingredients added. So the process for this, the physical process for this is shaken and double strained. Um, so obviously if you don't have a shaker, that's fine. You can just mix it about as vigorously as you like um, and can add as much ice as I want because I'm, I'm less concerned about the dilution for this drink um, and when I say double strain I'm going to use my my kind of fancy strainer here and I'm going to use the strainer that's part of my cocktail shaker as well and I want to do that because I want to end up with a clear liquid in my coupe glass and um, so I don't want any bits of cucumber and I don't want any little bits of lime in there either just just a clear liquid like like my clitorine um, but a kitchen sieve does the exact same job because the mesh is nice and tight. So if you want to use that, that's absolutely fine. So I'm going to add my eyes. You to go like quite close to the top of your shaker for this. Touch the lid. Make sure it's nice and secure. Now, this is the fun bit. Who's ready to get shaking? If you're not making the cocktail, that's fine. You can actually join me in some shaking. Uh, but I invite you to unmute, if you like, and then join me in some spectacular shaking experience. So you can just casually shake it over your shoulders if you want to, but also you can get up and dance. You can get into it. 
Orbit after all. <laughs> I'll take a, a mute and shower thing or do whatever you like. <laughs> done. How do I know I'm done? My hands are numb. So once this is too cold to touch, ah, your cocktail's ready to drink. <laughs> okay, so I have said that this is a double strain drink, so I'm not going to take the lid off my shaker. I've basically just taken the like little tiny lid off, and I've got my little strainer there. Um, oh no, actually, I tell a lie. I am going to take the lid off put my fancy strainer over the brim of my shaker and then I'm going to use this to pour my cartel through and hopefully avoid the rim. Also, if you end up with bits of cucumber and lime in your drink, it's not the end of the world. It's delicious. You should end up with a beautiful white creme at the top as well. If you're using a high quality apple juice and you shake it quite vigorously, it'll give you kind of a, a foam at the top, which is really good. And it should look like this. Cheers. A festive all delicious. Yeah, really good. Really balanced, not too sweet. I get the subtle flavors of the lime and the apple and the cucumber in there. And um, so again, I feel really fresh and I feel ready to go, really nice. And um, so again, over to you, um, feel free to pop into the chat if you're enjoying this um, and if anyone would like to share their reflections live, give us a wave and you can be unmuted. So I didn't put any gin into this. This is a non-alcoholic cocktail, but good question. You can stick gin in this if you want to, and it's really good. Um, I recommend any gin. Also, it's really good with a spiced rum, like a Captain Morgan spiced rum in this, especially with the cinnamon rim. Really delicious. You can definitely make this an alcoholic cocktail. Anyone like to raise their hand and share? If I'd make it with gin, how much would you use? Would you do that in place of the apple juice? Uh, no, I'd keep the apple juice in there, but actually I would, apple juice would be the one thing I would reduce. So I put in a hundred mils of apple juice in there. So what I would do is, um, how much room have I got left in my drink? I would actually, so the coupe glass is quite good. You can fill it to the top and it stays pretty secure. So what I would do is I'd put, 75 gin and 50 apple so you've got enough of the alcohol in there um but keep the rest keep the elderflower keep all that lime keep all that cucumber because that's really what the freshness is, is coming in from thank you really nice flavor love it awesome <laughs> anyone else let me see if we have any yeah we've got time anyone else want to talk about how they're finding their cocktail there was another question from Floor. Um, oh, yeah. Rose cordial or elderflower tonic? What is the best option? Ooh, rose cordial. Mm, that's really nice. Um, what I what I mix that with? The so rose cordial is really sweet. I, I picked elderflower because it's quite botanical. Um, and not too sweet. So when I'm adding in the sweet apple, um, I'm not I'm not getting really overwhelmed. A rose cordial will be quite sweet. So I don't know if I'd mix it with the apple. What would I mix it with? Mm. I actually might mix it with a soda and, and keep that rose flavor in there. Um, and it would be really subtle and really lovely. Um, but yeah, it's really up to you to experiment and explore. Like what today I've taken you on my personal taste uh, journey. Um, so, and I obviously love things that are really botanical, a little bit of savory flavors in there. But if you like something quite sweet and subtle, um, a rose cordial would be really good in there. Um, but yeah, maybe, maybe not with the apple juice. <laughs> we made a right mess in the kitchen. Yeah, you should see the table here. <laughs> it's a mess. <laughs> 
really great that you're enjoying the flavors yeah wonderful i mean with this just just explore um and like it is i think this is a really great warm-up to this explore launch party because um we're talking about like the confidence and the empowerment that comes with understanding what we like and what our partners like um so think about what flavors really ignite those passions that you have and, and play around with it um especially with non-alcoholic drinks as well you can kind of go a bit crazy with the martini the clitorini um that has worked with kind of, there's a lot of chemistry involved with that. So the physical process of mixing the gin and the vermouth in with the ice, what you're trying to do is use temperature to add the smoothness instead of adding a mix, mixer um, to create that smoothness, which makes it quite interesting. So, so the non-alcoholic versions of that would not give you that same chemistry. Um, but yeah, have a play, change, change the liquors, change whatever garnishes you want to use and find out what, what you like. And then the next time you're in a cocktail bar, when we can go to cocktail bars again, you can be more demanding about what you want. <laughs> um, so if there is no more questions or reflections, um, I will leave it there with you guys, two minutes till the end. I really hope that you enjoyed uh, making cocktails at me. I really enjoyed the opportunity to do that. And thank you so much to the Sex Explorer team to invite me for doing this. And I'm really looking forward to joining the program with you. And um, also hope that you've now got a new party trick with the lemon zest for Christmas. It'd be great to see you guys actually doing that. Um, and make sure to keep a drink for a toast at the start of the launch party. Obviously, if you've just swallowed everything right now, that's absolutely fine. I think you've got about five or 10 minutes to make a fresh one. Um, and there's nothing left to, but to say have fun um, and thank you once again. <laughs>